Welcome to the Sincerely God podcast. I'm Sarah, and I believe that God is speaking to all of us all the time and in many different ways. For me, the primary way that I listen is through two-way journaling. And in this podcast, I share excerpts from my prior journaling time with God, which are really inspirational messages spoken from the perspective of God to you. I'll share more about what two-way journaling is and explore other methods that might be helpful for you to listen to God in your own unique way. I'm just an ordinary person who gets to hear from an extraordinary God, and I believe you can too. Thanks for joining me. So the journaling that I'm going to share today is just a short one, but I was just asking God, like, why am I so tired? And I feel like he was really hitting on a couple of key points that were important lessons that I'm still learning today. So this is what the journaling says. My child, you do not allow enough time for rest in your day. You hurry on your way, worrying about being late for something that is unimportant to me. It is time to change your priorities. It is time to change how you live for me. Live for me and my kingdom. Follow my kingdom rules and no one else's. Do you know the rules of my kingdom? They are simpler than you think. Seek me first. Seek my will above all others. Seek me and follow me. Yes, seek me and my desires will become your own. Yes, you will begin to see through my eyes. You will begin to experience this world in its purest form. Right and wrong will show their true shades. The symptoms and cycles of this broken world will become apparent to you. You toil over things that are merely a symptom of this broken world. Do not continue to live this way. My way is better. My way is pure and holy in how I intend you to live. Yes, I am calling you out of the cycles of this broken world. Get out of the rat race, the never-ending merry-go-round that keeps you moving but doesn't take you anywhere. Follow my path instead. Follow my lead instead. I will ask you to lead a simpler life, one that is not marked by stress and worry. No, I have called you to quiet and stillness and pure connection. Yes, pure and authentic connection to me and to my people. Connection requires authenticity, and authenticity requires space to be you. Be who you are. Be who I created you. You think I created you for achieving, but this is not the case. I gave you every natural ability that is within you for my greater purposes, not the world's. The world says success is achievement and power and financial security, but I say it is knowing me and loving my people. Yes, love my people, my child. Love them like I love you. Love them as I do. You cannot love out of exhaustion. You cannot love authentically when you are too much in a hurry. I'm teaching you to let go. Let go and let me take the control. Yes, I am in charge. I am your new boss. Follow my example. Learn from me. I will make your way easy and your burden light. Yes, I will show you the way to abundant life. Follow me. I will take you there. I will lead you in the way in which you should go. Yes, I will be your guide. I will guide you by my spirit. Listen. Tune in. Do not be in such a hurry every day. Be still with me, my child. Be still throughout your day. Rest. Connect with me. Connect with others. This is my will and desire for you. Now go about your day, but remember to take time for rest and stillness. Yes, take time to connect with me. So there's so much in here that has been kind of a, almost a a life, I don't say lifelong, but it's been a long journey for me to learn a lot of these lessons. Number one, I think is, is stillness. Like he talks about take time in your day for rest and stillness, take time to connect with me. And for me, I had to learn how to be still. I had to learn how to rest. I think, I think it's something that is in our culture and society, at least within that American culture of like this doing, achieving, go, 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 always being productive. And that certainly fits with uh, my task oriented temperament and my personality style. So, you know, from a very young age, as kids, as soon as we get into school, right, the structure is very focused on achieving and doing And so I've really lived my whole life just in this kind of doing mentality. And 
for me to even get to the space of, for example, to, to start even journaling years ago, I had to first learn about stillness and resting. And when I say stillness, I think that for me, it looks like actual peace and quiet. I'm usually sitting still, being in this more of a meditative posture, I guess you would say, but that's not true for everybody. So when I say stillness, I really think stillness is, is a way of calming our, our mind. Um, that could be going for a walk. That could be, you know, I think it's more of like a mindfulness technique. There's a lot of different ways that you can achieve mindfulness, but I had to first learn how to just rest and be okay with not being productive. I mean, I used to not even be able to just do nothing on a weekend. Or when I say nothing, I mean nothing productive. Like there's chores to do, there's there's goals to achieve, there's new things to learn, like whatever it may be, I was always on this go, go, go. And if I wasn't doing something that I considered productive, like I actually felt guilty about it. So that was the first step. And it was a process of like learning, learning how to do that first before I could even get into a space where I could then come into time to connect with God. Not, I mean, we're always connected, I think, with God, but to really be able to like tune in and and to be in a state where I could be in a listening, um, or my heart could be listening, my mind could be listening. If I didn't have enough um, balance in my week, in my day to be able to rest, then when I actually took time to be still, my mind was still going. I couldn't actually still myself. So it, it was a process. But I think that's an ongoing thing. Like I have come a long way with my own balance and taking time to be still, like prioritizing it. I think in our culture, we tend to not prioritize rest and and things that we enjoy and, you know, just doing things that aren't for an ultimate goal or purpose, except for just connection, connection with people, connection with God, connection with ourselves. Connection requires authenticity and authenticity requires space to be you. Wow, that's huge for me. I can look back at my my own journey about this, this idea of authenticity. I look at where I am now, the quality of relationships that I have now is so much tied to authenticity. How authentic can I be with myself? And then how authentic can I be with other people? For many years, for most of my life, I don't think I ever felt I didn't feel safe enough to be authentic and it takes work to, and the process I think really with God to figure out who, who you even are and to be able to be authentic as that, that real you, that true you, um, that whole you. And in, until you can become or start to get into that space of feeling safe enough with yourself, it's hard to be authentic with anybody else. And real relationship, healthy relationships, friendships, or you know, any kind of relationship with your siblings, with your parents, kids, spouse, whatever, it, it requires that authenticity. And that, that authenticity requires space. Space from a, I think, time perspective, right? Space to be still, to rest, to explore, but also space in, in yourself to be able to accept things, to be able to trust yourself, to be able to make allowances. And I think that authenticity is, it's what's required, but at the same time, it's a process. And this making time and space to be still with God, to enjoy things, to have that kind of mindfulness times and, and really process, I think, some of your own stuff. Sometimes we avoid stillness because we're afraid of what's going to come up because there is stuff inside that maybe we've bottled up that we have pushed down. And when you get quiet and you stop the busyness of the, the world, then you are almost forced to be authentic and forced to face some of those things that maybe that you've been trying to avoid. And while I do understand that we have times and seasons and we, we do, you know, when we have trauma and things, there is usually a time and space that you have this protective 
barrier up and it is protective just like if you have you know a, a fresh wound you put a bandage to protect it but you can't leave that bandage on forever eventually you have to remove and you have to actually do some more work to to process honestly it's just processing so i think having that time space to be authentic and to be authentic with God, even if it's being authentic with, I'm not comfortable with myself in this area, or I have hurt still in this area, or I have anger, or I have, you know, whatever it may be, there's a step towards authenticity to be vulnerable with yourself and with God. And I think that comes first before you can be vulnerable with other people, but that vulnerability is what's required for authenticity. And if you can do that first step to just start to take steps towards being still with yourself, being still with God, then there is a process that occurs where that authenticity grows, that authenticity builds and expands. And I think for me, it wasn't just a matter of, oh, I'm, I'm putting on this fake face or I'm, I'm pretending to be someone I'm not. It was so much of it. I don't think I fully knew what my authentic self self looked like. I don't know that I knew fully who I think I'm still, still exploring and learning who I am. And that takes time and that takes intentionality and that takes courage to to dig into those spaces and see because there are things maybe about about ourselves that that we don't like or maybe we're not comfortable with and maybe it's not even that it's bad it's just it's been contrary to what we've seen as acceptable or it's different from what we view as ideal and we have to come into that place of recognizing the value of our uniqueness and i think being open to just explore new aspects of ourselves and step into maybe uncomfortable areas or scary areas that could be because of old hurts and wounds and things that have been said or done to you, but that could also just because it's new and you've never stepped into that area before. And so the unknown is scary. So I think one other thing that I want to highlight from this message is where he says, Live for me in my kingdom, follow my kingdom rules and no one else's. And then he goes on to talk about the symptoms and cycles of this broken world. So I think this ties back into that same idea of authenticity. If we look at our day to day, if we look at a lot of the things that cause us stress, that cause us to strive and constantly be in this like, go, 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 I need to achieve this. I need to accomplish that. If we were to be really honest and sit down and look inside of us, I don't think that that thing, that expectation, that responsibility would actually match up to our deepest desires of what is truly our authentic desires. And instead, they're a symptom of this broken world. They're a, a cycle that we get caught up in, right? The rat race, the the hamster wheel, the merry-go-round. I have felt that so many times in just the pace that I kept of this kind of merry-go-round of well, I'm going, 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 I'm working so hard, but I'm not actually making any forward movement. And when I say forward movement, I mean like, sure, sometimes we can say, hey, I, I got the promotion. I accomplished this achievement, this thing that the world says is good and necessary and all the things. Maybe it's financial. I made this amount of money or I was able to buy this thing. But when we're honest, is that really meeting the the deepest desires of our heart? Or is that just because that's what the world around us says is important? And so when he says like, you know, seek me first, even if you're not in a place where you fully, fully believe in God, I think if you can get into that authentic part of you, there is a deeper, a deeper rule. There's a deeper kingdom way of living. You know, kingdom is just, maybe that's probably an interesting term here in America because we don't like have a kingdom, right? We have a country, but we have laws, we have morals, we have standards, we have agreed upon rules of how we do our, our lives. And so 
this idea of there's a different kingdom is really kind of a saying that there's a different way of life. And even if you don't, you know, identify as a Christian or fully believe, I think most of us, if we actually were honest with ourselves, could say like, no, I feel inside of me that there is a different way of doing this life than what, what I'm doing or what I see all around me. And so even if you just take it from that perspective, that there is a different kingdom, there is a different way of living and and it doesn't look the same as this broken world. It doesn't look the same of these kind of merry-go-round cycles of doing the same thing over and over again without actually feeling that internal fulfillment. So seeking God, maybe that starts with just seeking what is authentically you. Because personally, I think the more that you understand who you are, the more that you can be authentic with yourself, that will actually lead you to God because God is in you and he created you and he is truth and and life and purity. And so when you get to that deeper truth, when you get to that more pure form, I think it leads, leads you to God anyway. So things to take away from this, this message, I think, take time to rest, to be still, take time to explore who you are from a pure, authentic uh, version of yourself. Even if that means taking time to actually look at some things that you have purposely bottled up or buried or avoided. I'm not saying you have to go deep dive into all of it right at once, but just taking time to be still in whatever way that may be for you and start to let some of those things come out. Maybe start asking yourselves questions of what are the desires of my heart? What are the deeper truths that I believe that I want to have a part of my life? And maybe how are those different than what I see in the world around me? And what are maybe some things that I'm doing because of what the world around me says is important that is actually contradictory to what I feel is is going to be what brings me more fulfillment, what brings me peace. So take that time. It's going to look different, I think, for for each of us. We all have different areas of focus and different areas that are really our next step to, to becoming more authentic. And I think it is a lifelong process. I think there's very few people and when you meet them, they stand out, but there's very few people that have really reached, I think, this true deep whole level of authenticity. I can see how much I have I've shifted in my own life. Who I am today looks very different than who I was five years ago, 10 years ago, even a year ago, because of this process of, of, of walking towards authenticity and exploring more and, and trying to discover more of who I am and who God is and, and what is important in this life. So it's this constant process, but I can see how far I've come and how much I've progressed. And I think um, you'll begin to see that too. So I encourage you to maybe take some time to, to ask some questions of yourself, to actually be, give yourself space that, that requires time, that requires intentionality to, to explore some things. And maybe it's something about asking a question of What is a desire that I feel is deep and true within me? What do I feel are some of the most important things to me? What's something that I think brings me fulfillment, even if you're not getting that fulfillment today? And as you maybe explore some of those questions or even just get to one answer to one of those questions, then maybe the next step is to say, okay, what what am I maybe stressing, striving, being busy about in this life that is contrary to that value, that is contrary to that desire? And then explore, well, then why am I doing that particular thing? Is it because it's an expectation that the world has put on me? Well, maybe that is actually a symptom of the broken world and not the purest form and authentic version of not only of you, but the authentic version of, of life and living and connecting with others. I think as 
you do that more and more, you'll find not only do you become more authentic for yourself, but that allows you to be more authentic with others, which is only going to improve the relationships that you have. I can definitely say that from my own experience that my relationships now are so much more rich, so much more fulfilling, so much more full than they were when I wasn't able to be my authentic self. So I encourage you, explore, and definitely I'm just praying that you can get to that next level of authenticity, whatever that means for you. Thanks for tuning in to the Sincerely God podcast. Be sure to like and subscribe and share with your friends. If you'd like more information, you can go to my website, sincerelygodquotes.com. There you'll find links to my social media, as well as an ability to get your own copy of Sincerely God, a collection of quotes, either the book or the prayer journal. Until next time, keep listening to how God is speaking to you. It's all inside you, waiting to be-